A bond of friendship. In our last story, we learned how Saul sought to take David's life. Jealousy and rage filled Saul, and he sent men to murder him. But Jonathan saved David, and David escaped to Samuel. In this story, we learn how Jonathan and David's friendship grows stronger. Jonathan protects and nurtures David from the heavy hand of Saul, as inspired by the book of 1 Samuel. David and Jonathan sat sitting on a stone facing the city below. Subtle tears welled up in David's eyes as he watched the city from afar. What have I done to deserve this from him? David said, shaking his head. Jonathan sat there silently for a moment, allowing David to feel the sting of betrayal. He put his hand on David's shoulder and said, You shall not die, my friend. My father does nothing without telling me first. I will know if he tries anything else. David was not convinced. He was still soaking up the view of the city. He loved the people as his own sheep. The sun was beginning its descent, and a mild orange filled the skies. David, still looking forward, said, Your father knows we are closer than brothers. He would not tell you of his plans to kill me again. I'll do whatever you want, Jonathan said. Tomorrow is the new moon, and your father is expecting me to feast with him and the elders. I will hide instead, and you will tell him I am in Bethlehem, making a sacrifice with my clan. If your father is fine, then we will know he means me no harm. If your father is angry, we will know his heart. David paused for a moment. He felt his tears returning. He regained his composure and stood up. You and I have made a promise to be friends. However, if you find any guilt in me, you should kill me yourself. Jonathan sprang to his feet and said, Nonsense! Come, let us go out into the field. So the two walked through the fields. Jonathan put his arm around David and said, I shall send word of Saul's temperament. Jonathan paused and became very serious. Listen, God will show you favor wherever you go. He will exalt you as king and destroy all those that make you their enemy. Please, show love to my house when God removes your enemies. David took Jonathan's words very seriously, and the two of them made a covenant with one another there in the field. Jonathan promised to serve David and protect him, and David swore to show Jonathan and his entire household love and favor. Jonathan spoke again, saying, in the next three days, I will go out into the field for target practice where you are hiding. I will shoot three arrows towards you and send my servant to go and retrieve them. If you hear me yell, the arrows are on that side. It means the coast is clear for you to return. If you hear me yell, go further, then that means Saul is still seeking your life and you should flee. The two of them embraced and parted ways. David loved Jonathan's soul as much as his own, and there were no closer friends in all of Israel. The moon festival had begun, and David's place at the king's table was empty. Saul paid little attention to David's absence, thinking he may have just been ill. However, when the second day of the festival passed, Saul asked Jonathan, saying, Where is the son of Jesse? Jonathan cleared his throat and replied, David asked me if he could go back to Bethlehem to make a sacrifice with his clan. His brothers demanded it. Saul drove his knife into the table. You stupid son of a whore, he yelled. Do you think I'm a fool? I know you want him to be king in your place. You shame yourself and your mother. As long as David lives, you will never be king. Saul shoved his chair back and pointed to his servants. Go! Find David so I can slaughter him myself. Jonathan stood up and yelled back at his father. Why should he be put to death? As Jonathan was speaking, Saul took his spear and hurled it at Jonathan. He missed, and the spear was driven into the wall behind him. The room was silent. Saul was huffing in anger. Jonathan met his father's gaze with complete rage in his eyes. 
Jonathan did not fear Saul, for he knew that the Lord was with David. Jonathan said nothing and left the room in a silent fury. The next morning, Jonathan went out into the field with his servant for target practice. He shot three arrows into the distance where he knew David was hiding. He turned to his servant and said, Start running. You will find the arrows as I shoot them. So the boy ran unknowingly in David's direction. The boy was close to where the arrows were, but Jonathan yelled, Keep running! The arrow is still ahead of you! Hurry! Hurry! Do not wait even a moment! So the boy ran faster, but the command to run was really for David. He bowed in Jonathan's direction and fled into the wilderness to escape the judgment of Saul. Although David was in hiding, God's desire to use him was not finished. Neither would there be separation between his heart and Jonathan's.